Hey guys, Jay here and welcome to another cosplay tutorial. Today, I'll be making Cloud's Kingdom Hearts 1 harness and armor. So a few things before I begin, you can find a pattern to the shoulder pad and the armor on my website which will be linked below in the description. And this isn't going to be as in detail as some of the other tutorials because a lot of it's very straightforward. Like the armor in this one, the build is almost exactly the same as my last armor build. So I just kind of skim over it a little bit. So if you want to see a lot more detail where I got some things like the bolts and all that kind of stuff, please watch that tutorial. So this goes a little faster over everything because there's multiple things in the tutorial. Also at the beginning, I show you how to make this strap right here, but I also mentioned that's how I made every strap. All the straps are exactly the same. It's just some of them, like these ones, are double-sided, where this one is just folded over, but it's single-sided. Other than that, they're all the same. It's just, this is two layers and this is one layer. So it shouldn't be really that hard to understand, but if you get confused, hopefully that kind of helps. Anyway, let's get started. To start off, I'll show you how I made literally every strap for this harness. That way I only have to do it once and not every single time. First cut the vinyl into a strip. I'm making the vertical strips, as in the ones that aren't going to be going around my waist, one and a half inches wide, and just so you know, the ones around my waist are two inches wide. While these are more accurate however wide you end up making it, you'll need to cut it out so that it's half an inch wider on each side. This way you can lay the strip face down and fold the long sides in, which is really no different than hemming your pants or a dress or something, and you're going to do this on both sides. You can also do this with a second strip on top face up to make it double sided, and I did this for the three different straps that are going to connect to the belt buckle. Then you just sew it up and you have a nice strap. Now that you know how all the straps were made, let's move on to the shoulder pad. It's basically the same thing, but larger and not a rectangle. There's a pattern on my website which you can find in the description. Feel free to make it longer if you want. I don't mind it being not that long in the back, so if you think it needs to be, then just make it a little bit longer by adding some length to the back of the pattern. For this I used two layers of vinyl as well as some interfacing inside the layers to make it a little more sturdy. And I did two stitches around the edge. Now I'm not that great at it, so yours may turn out better than mine if you're used to sewing around corners and such. I'm not. Anyway, on the waist straps, I left a little overhang on one side. This will be folded over to hold the strap onto the buckle, which speaking of, here's how I made that. I used a tin I had laying around that was the right size to trace and cut a circle out of scrap EVA format. Then I used the Dremel to smooth the sides down and make it look a lot nicer. After that, I used some 4mm square foam doweling, which I'll also link below, and cut strips to contact cement to the top to make the raised trim and cross details. Here's what that looks like with the waist straps. Then after painting it with black plastic dip followed by silver spray paint and a satin clear coat, I needed to figure out how to attach the top strap. I found this long but short buckle in my spare buckle drawer and cut a slit in the back of the foam at a very small angle so that when the buckle is glued in with super glue and hot glue, the part sticking out has enough room to fit the strap that it'll attach to. Then I cut slits in the left and right side of the foam and put square buckles on either side and glued them in with super glue, gluing the slits back closed. But before adding them, I cut the center bar out of the buckles and grinded the metal down with the Dremel so that it wasn't sharp anymore. And you can see here how the strap will attach. For the strap that connects to the back side of the buckle piece, it has a pointed tip on one side. It's made the same way as the others, just with a triangle cut in the tip rather than a square. Anyway, this one has a visible snap, so I added one. These actually have instructions on the box, so I don't really need to say how to use them. But I did add them in a lot of places. I actually used 16 in total. Don't worry though, I will tell you everywhere that I used them. This is just the first one. Later on, when you figure out where you'll need to fold around the other side of this piece, you'll need another one. When you make this piece, you'll want to make it double-sided and leave the other end opened because when you put that snap in, you're going to want it to be on the inside so that when it's put together, you can't see it. This will make it so you don't have a seam where there's not supposed to be one. When you add the second half of the snap that connects to the one on the pointed end, make sure you can still pull it through the buckle first. My buckle is just enough to slide the strap through, but not with the snaps on it. So I slide it through before finishing the snap set first. Now it's stuck this way forever, so just don't mess up. Then for ease of adjustment, I added three snaps to the back of the waist straps, as well as a set of snaps on the ends that connect to the buckle. But the top half of the snaps are on a nylon strap sewn into the back of the leather strap so that they aren't visible. 
And now I'm just going to show you a few things that I didn't mention. First, these armor holding straps. I'll talk about them a little later. I added three snap tops here for decoration, as well as this strap here is connected under the shoulder pad by another snap. This strap connects the back together and has one snap top and two bottoms for adjustment. The front and back are connected this way so that they can rotate freely. And the bottom of the back strap has a snapping loop for horizontal adjustment. For me, this works perfectly in between the two outer snaps on the waist straps. Now let's move on to the armor. It's made of the same floor mat as the buckle. The pattern for this will also be in the same file as the shoulder pad. I cut it out on a 90 degree angle on the center line where the two pieces connect, just like the other cloud armors, and a 45 degree angle or sharper around the rest of it. You can do a 90 degree angle on what will be the area where the strip goes on the back, but that's up to you. Then mark and cut the holes for the bolts. I use the exact same bolts that I did in the other armor tutorial. Then use the Dremel to smooth out all the cut edges and the holes. I used the heat gun to heat each piece up and form them over my little makeshift planisher. Then I used contact cement in two coats on the center edge to glue both of the halves together. Then I tested out the bolts and used the Dremel with the grinding bit to make battle damage on the surface. I don't really know how to explain exactly what I did, but it should look organic, almost like something that indented metal. Then I took a pen and drew the line that makes the trim on the edge and used a very sharp X-Acto blade to cut into the surface around the entire piece and used a heat gun to open the cut up and make it look more pronounced. Then I drew a crack that you can see on the Decidia version of this outfit and used a thinner grinding bit to open that up. Then I used that same bit around the entire trim cut. And finally I used my normal sanding drum held very steadily to round off the corners not just on the outside of the whole piece but also on either side of that trim cut. To make the strip piece, I just cut a rectangle that fit the width of the back of the armor with the side that isn't being attached cut at the same angle as the rest of the armor. Cutting the armor at an angle like this going inward makes it appear thinner than it actually is. And then on the side that gets glued down, the angle you cut will really depend on what you cut the armor at. It should sit slightly angled upward. You'll have to figure out all the math on your own. After covering the armor in plastidip spray, I glue the bolts in place with super glue and paint it with a dark silver spray paint. To attach it to the shoulder pad, I use a Dremel to make a divot just like I did with the dome details in the remake armor, but here on the underside after figuring out where everything will go and gluing short bolts into the holes. I use a nut to bolt down the strap to the armor and use hot glue to make a silicone cap so that the nut can't come off. Also before attaching it, I add a snap the same way I did on the strap before, where one side of the snap is inside the strap because it's not visible. And then that attaches to its other half on the shoulder pad. All right, so now we're on to how to put this thing together and I'm gonna do this not tutorial style, but whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to put the harness on the entire cosplay because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't show. So uh, first we're gonna start off with the shoulder pad here which has the back piece on it and I do have two snaps here this is the one I'm using this is a mess up uh, so pretend that it isn't there so this is the one that we're gonna be doing and I have on my shirt uh, these other ones that are sewn on these the other side of snaps and this is actually for every version of cloud is going to have these snaps the right side won't be used in this cosplay but it's fine because the cape actually covers that because this version has a cape and he's only got one side. So whatever, it works. Uh, so I don't have to worry about it or get a new shirt. So this snaps on. I also have two snaps for size adjustment. Um, I was gonna do that with this, but I decided not to. But um, so the way to put this on is to just snap it down onto the shirt like so. And that's, that's it. And then we're gonna take the rest of the entire harness, which is literally just three belts. And then we're gonna put this one on like this. So this one was longer and folded over. It came down to, there's a silver mark on here, but I can wash that off. But it came down to about there and I cut it shorter after I put this snap on here. And this snap is inside, so you can't see it on this side because it's supposed to be blank. So that way you don't see the snap. And it just goes in like this, and then you find it and snap it together like that. There we go, just like that. And then these snaps 
I'm just going to leave like this forever because I don't have to worry about them because I have these ones which go around the body. So I'm going to turn the whole thing around actually. So now that we're at the back, we just snap. I made it so that the three snaps put together is my size and then it can adjust to be bigger or smaller. This goes around this way. Now the reason it goes like this, I don't know if I explained it in the tutorial. I haven't recorded that part yet. Um, I haven't recorded the voiceover, so I don't know if I say it or not, but this is just one single layer. So if I had it going this way, you would see this. And that can catch on things and I don't want that. So I do it this way. And another thing you can do so that this doesn't move around is put it in here. That way it doesn't move. And it would go like on this side for anybody else, but it's not a big deal, whatever. Now with it at the side, we're gonna put the armor on. So as you can see, I made it so that it, it's rotational here as well as on these snaps. So it'll rotate on the two snaps. That gives me the best movement. So I don't know how well I explain it, but it's just bolted on. The bolts are hot glued and super glued inside the foam. And then there's hot glue around it so that it doesn't you know, scratch you or anything. And it's, so it's silicone on it. it, won't ruin anything, but also the bolts won't come off. The, or the nuts won't come off the bolts. So when we just put these on the two snaps that I have on here, So I put them like that. Now it's not gonna be that great on the dress form because it's not my size exactly. So it does droop a little bit, but there's nothing I can do about it. But that's how all of that goes. And then I just have my old cape from like 2012. I did this way back then, so I still have the cape. So here's what it's like all put together. So this is pretty much it. All right, so there's the tutorial for the harness and armor for Kingdom Hearts One Cloud. If you're confused about anything, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it as best I can. I can't promise anything because I'm not very good at explaining in text. I'm better at speaking or showing something, more showing than anything. But if I can, I'll try to help. But it should all be pretty straightforward. Also, when I did this snap here in the tutorial, which is the only time I showed you doing a snap, I said that I would tell you where all 16 are. Technically, I didn't tell you where all 16 of them are, but I have showed them in the tutorial. But just for a count, I'm gonna do that right now. I'll put a count like behind my head there or something. So we've got two that connect to the side of the buckle here, one here and one here. Then we have one here and one holding this piece on, one underneath here that holds on this strap, one here that holds on the armor, one up top that holds the pad onto the shoulder, another one that holds the armor on, one that holds the back strap on. Technically, I use two backside pieces to make this more adjustable, but there's one regular little thing in there. So there's only one, we're only counting one. Then one holding the loop for the back strap and three on the back of the waist straps. So now you have an actual count of all of them and know where they all go. But anyway, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you'd like to go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.